Herman on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Herman. Hey, how you doing, man? Doing great. Check this out. They, they, they call me the Black Tom Likas. Who calls you the Black Tom Likas? All my friends. Really? Yeah. Tell us why. Well, because I give, I give them information that they need. Like, I, I got about 12, I got 12 11 guys I, I talk to. What kinds of things do you tell them? How, how to handle women, how, how to handle they sell, brown women. Really? Yeah. And uh, how old are your buddies? They, they, they in their 20s. They're, they're on 19. the... Yeah. One of, one of them 19, the rest of them in their 20s. Really? Yeah, I tell them, I tell them how to treat women. Is that so? So so uh, they come to you for advice, and uh, what, do they call you, and you all get no, together? And... They, they, they come to the house. They come to your house, they're looking for advice, yeah, and you're the black true. Tom Likas. Pardon me? You're the black Tom Likas. That's what they call me. Wow. I love that. I do, too. Now, do you get more ass than a toilet seat? Hey, man, I don't, I don't mess with women with, with no period. <laughs> <laughs> you know why? Why? I don't worry about knocking them up. I don't worry about nothing. But, well, that's true. The way, the way I want sex, I, I want it now. <laughs> I got that way, 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 but don't know no, no thing between their legs to take off. Uh, okay. And uh, let me ask you this, Herman. I'm just curious. Uh, when you, you, These women, how old are they? What are their ages? I got, I got one 35. I got one 30. I got one 20, 28. I had, I, had, I had one twenty one last week. Really? I had to get rid of her. Why? She got on my nerves. She got on your nerves. You you you, 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 you go on her nerves. I could I cut you loose. Yeah, that's right. You dump that bitch. There you go. Yeah, I was calling, man. I have a question for you. I was dating this girl like five years ago. I was doing her, and you know, doing the thing, <laughs> and uh. She disappeared, and I lost contact with her, and I called you like in a year, right? First thing I knew, she, she had had a baby. She had just had a baby. I didn't think about it much then, and I thought, I thought when she told me, she was kind of telling me like, oh, it could be your kid, or it, 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 it's your kid, or something like that. But you, Wait, know, you, you I, felt like she told you, or you thought she told you? Well, she told me, and I feel like the only reason she told me was because, was, was, was because she was trying to tell me it was my kid. But that, that's what I feel, okay? Oh, so, so she didn't actually say that. That was your opinion. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and, uh, you know, I, we seen each other that day, and, uh, you know, we did our thing, and I, what I told th her, Wait, wait, wait. We did our thing? What thing did you do? Oh, uh, <laughs> I, I got her doggy style. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. And, so, uh, and what brand of condom did you use this time? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, all right, so I, 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 I see her like a year after, and she tells me this, and, you know, I do her doggy style, and I'm like, man, you always you always, you always uh, make make my summers uh, fun. And that was the last... That was, Come that on. That was the last time I seen her, right? Yeah, and now she, and, uh, wait, let me guess. No, then she called you again a year later. And now you heard two babies crying in the background. <laughs> and, uh. Right? No, she, well, she, had, she already had two kids. She was separated at the time. Oh, she already had two kids. So you think it's a good idea to take someone who's already got two kids and have sex with them without a condom? You think that's a good idea? Now that I think about it, no, it's not. <laughs> it's not a good idea. Uh -huh. You know, and, and I feel the same way right now. I just. I was young and stupid at the time, or no, whatever, no, no, no! Wanted. Don't say at the time. <laughs> All right, uh, back back then when I was young. Yeah, yeah you're so, still stupid. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and you agree, which I think is fantastic. Hey, uh, what? Hey, uh, what can I say? <laughs> From somewhere in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Oh, my God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. 
We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. By down our telephone number, you're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TALK. 1-800-5-800-866. A listener sent me this story from the Los Angeles Times. It appeared while I was on vacation. And uh, the listener correctly guessed that I would have a strong opinion about this story. The headline on the story by Ken Benzinger of the Los Angeles Times. New cars that are fully loaded with debt. Here's a portion of the story. When Jennifer and Bobby Post traded in their 2001 Chevy Suburban last year, for a shiny new Ford F-350 turbo diesel with an extended cab. It seemed like a great deal. Even though they still owed $9,500 on their SUV after the trade-in value, they didn't have to put a penny down. The dealership near the Post's home in Victorville made it easy. It just added the old debt to the price of the new truck and gave the couple a seven-year, $44,276 loan. The Posts were a little worried about taking on such a long obligation, but they couldn't pass up a monthly payment under $700. Idiots. Now, says the Los Angeles Times, they're having regrets. Jennifer Post, who has since moved with her family to Iowa, said, I didn't realize how much debt was in it. Now she'd like to get rid of the truck, but can't, because there's so much debt that she'd literally have to pay someone to take it off her hands. We have no options. She said, well, boo-hoo-hoo, Jennifer. Wah, wah, wah. First of all, if you can't afford a monthly payment or a monthly payment of $700 a month, did you have to have a brand new truck? Seriously. I didn't own a brand new car until I was 26 years old. And at that, it was a Honda Accord. A Ford F-350, by the way, a great truck. A fantastic truck. If you love trucks, this one's killer. But it's for people who can afford it. People who can't afford it don't have the right to own it. It's that simple. Think about this, you goons. A seven-year car loan? When's the last time you owned a car for seven years? Let's take your last truck, for example. A 2001 Chevy Suburban. If you're lucky, you just made it to seven years on that car. So in essence, if you had had a seven-year loan, you would just be making the final payment on the previous truck. Gotta be kidding me. And when you combine that with the rule of 78, anybody know what the rule of 78 is? talked about the rule of 78s before. Let us say you take a one-year loan at any interest rate. It doesn't matter. They figure out what the interest is for that year. 
So to put it in simple numbers, if you buy a $30,000 car at a simple 6% interest rate, that is $1,800. But what the bank does is instead of charging you per month, the $150 a month that $1,800 would be at the end of a year, they use what's called the rule of 78s to front load that interest. So in my example, are you with me? They take $18,000 and multiply it by the following fraction. And I know your head is going to spin, and that's why people don't understand this stuff, but they should learn. Okay. Did you know the numbers 1 through 12 add up to 78? I know it's not a very exciting fact. But down at the bank, that's a very exciting fact. You know why? Dean is laughing hysterically. Dean can't count up to 78. <laughs> Dying laughing down the hall. I'm trying to keep up. <laughs> Dean's trying to keep up. Dean, why don't you check out the rule of 78s online? Google it. Yeah, he's Googling it already. So what they do at the bank is this. Uh, as fractions, month one of your one-year loan, you're not paying one-twelfth of the total amount of interest. You know, 12 months of the year, you probably assume you're paying one-twelfth of the interest in the first month, and you'll pay one-twelfth each of the 12 months, right? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> you pay 12 78ths of the total. which is closer to one-sixth of the total than one-twelfth. You're paying almost twice as much as you thought you were going to pay in that first month. And each month, the amount you pay in interest goes down. The first month, it's 12 78 The second month, it's 11 78 The third month, it's 10 78 Oh, 70 seconds. I'm sorry. Rule of 72s, Dean? Yeah, that's what coming up. Okay. Rule of 72. So the first month, it's 12 70 seconds or one-sixth, which is twice as much as you think you're going to pay. The second month, it's 11 70 seconds. The third month, it's 10 70 seconds. The fourth month, it's 9 70 seconds. The fifth month, it's 8 70 seconds. That is why on a loan, ever look at uh, your student loan or your mortgage payment or whatever, you ever notice how little interest you're paying in the last month? That's because they front load the interest using this rule of 72. So what ends up happening? Think about this. What ends up happening is that in the last month of a one-year loan, you're paying 172nd of the total of interest. One, that, that's a percentage, a fraction. One over 72. I mean, it's mere pennies. But you're paying a huge amount in the first month. Now, they do the exact same thing with a seven-year loan, only instead of the rule of 12s or 72s, it's the rule of... <laughs> uh, well, just how many months are there in seven years? That's right, 84. And so the interest over seven years is front-loaded into the early part of that loan. Right? So the result is that you're paying very little principal in the beginning and a huge amount of interest. And it isn't until the last year or year and a half of the loan that you're paying almost all principal, by which time the car is usually worth less than what you agreed to pay for it. Now, by the way, you need to learn this basic fact about loans before you take a seven-year loan. Maybe you can't afford it. If you have to stretch a loan out for seven years, maybe that's a car that's out of your budget. I don't knock the banks. I don't knock the car dealers for doing what they do. They're in this business to make money. Some of the companies that my mutual funds are invested in are the companies that profit from doing this. You need to learn how it works, and then you need to uh, limit your purchases to stuff you can afford and stop buying stuff you can't afford. 
and these weepy stories in the paper about people who bought houses they can't afford, and they well, didn't understand how much it was, or where they, they bought cars they can't afford. I'm getting tired of them. Maybe you sit down and scratch this stuff out. Maybe you ask the financing department at the car de dealership or you ask the bank to sketch out an amortization schedule so you can see how much in interest and how much in principal you're paying. Find out the total amount of interest you'll pay. By the way, all those pieces of paper they make you sell when you buy a car, it's all in there. All that stuff you never read, you know, all those, those carbons of all those reams of paper you signed an initial when you bought that car, all of it is explained in there. But you were too anxious to get your hands on the wheel to actually read any of that stuff. And you should have read it. I am not in favor of rescuing people who are too lazy to do their own homework, for God's sake. This story from the Los Angeles Times goes on. It says here, Americans haven't just been taking out risky mortgages for homes in the last few years. They've also been signing larger automobile loans for significantly longer terms than they used to. As a result, people are slipping into a perpetual cycle of automobile debt that experts think could lead to a new credit crunch extending from dealerships to driveways and all the way to Wall Street. Says here, gone are the days of the three-year car loan. The length of the average automobile loan hit five years, four months in October, up more than six months from 2002, according to the Federal Reserve. And nearly 45% of loans written today are for longer than six years. Even some staid lenders owned by the car makers, such as Toyota Financial Services and Ford Credit, are offering seven-year financing. And a few credit unions, particularly in the West, are tinkering with the eight-year loan. At the same time, the amount of money drivers owe on their cars is soaring. In October, the average amount financed hit $30,738, up $3,500 in just a year, and nearly 40% in the last decade, according to the Federal Reserve. More troubling, today's average car owner, owes $4,221 more than the vehicle is worth at the time it's sold. Did you hear what I just said? When you sell your car, the average American, which is you, you dumbass, the average American car owner owes $4,221 more than the car is worth at the time of sale. When you sell your car, you still owe money on it. You can't use your car as a down payment on a new car because you owe more on it than it's worth. When you trade, people trade in their vehicle, they automatically think they're going to get some kind of discount on the next car. You dope. That $4,221 is up from $3,529 in 2002, according to industry analyst Edmonds, you know, the Edmonds Blue Book. Says here the longer loans are directly related to the higher balances. By extending the length of loans, lenders keep monthly payments down, but because these loans take longer to pay off, a much larger piece of the principal remains unpaid at the time the car is traded in. Mm hmm. Just amazing. Then they've got more stories about these poor people who buy these cars and don't understand what they're getting themselves into. I am getting tired of this stuff. I'm really getting tired of it. I mean, think. If you need more than a five-year car loan, folks, you need to ratchet down the amount of the purchase. Maybe you buy a one-year-old vehicle that's been reconditioned by the dealer and has certain warranties and guarantees on it, or a two-year-old vehicle. Maybe you don't need a brand-new truck. Maybe you need a used car. Stop being such a poser. You don't have the money. You're a deadbeat, and you're a loser. If you're buying things and you don't understand how you're paying for them, you don't understand the terms, or you end up not being able to make the payments, you're a deadbeat, and you're a moron. I don't feel sorry for people like you, not at all. If you don't understand the terms, ask. If the explanation is unclear, go to an attorney for 30 minutes of time to have them sit down and go over the contract you're signing. 
have them explain it to you. Don't be an idiot. Just amazing. And they somehow want to blame the lenders for this. They want to blame the car dealers for this. It's outrageous. You know what? If you can't afford something, just don't freaking buy it. Right? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. You'll be glad to know when I did the DTB email I got from my girl said, and if I hear the name Tom Likas one more time, I'm going to blow up. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's Tom Likas Show. <laughs> well, well, well. Before we go any further with this story, I was right about the rule of 78s. One of many emails we received here from you math geeks out there. Tom at Studio City writes in and says, Dean doesn't know what he's talking about. Tell me something I'd already know. He says here the rule of 78s has to do with interest on debt and how much you've paid at any point in the loan. Which is what I'm saying. Rule of 72 has to do with how long it takes your principal to double at a set interest rate. So, there you go. It's rule of 78. Yet you see, 12 plus 1 equals 13. All right, and then if you go down the list, you know, 11 plus 2, 10 plus 3, 9 plus... It's 6 times 13 is 78. That's what it is. It is 78. Dean, you got rooked. <laughs> what I don't get is if you Google Rule of 78s, the Rule of 78s comes up. Where did he get Rule of 72 from? Well, you had to be here during the break when we confronted Dean about this. Here, I asked Dean, did you read the Rule of 72s? And he says, I, I have it up on the screen. I'm looking at it. Yeah, but what does it say? Well, I was just about to start to read it. I was just about to start to read it. So first, I feel like Frank Reynolds when Reagan was shot. First, let's get this thing nailed down. First, first he says, oh, no, it's not Rule 70, it's Rule 72s. But that's before he's actually read to see what Rule 72 is. It turns out it has nothing to do with what we're talking about. It's rule of 78s that I'm talking about. And that's the rule that's applied to mortgages, car loans, and other loans. <laughs> Anything with a fixed term does not apply to credit cards because that's what's called revolving credit. And you don't know how many months that's going to be. So they just sock it to you every day on your credit card. But uh, if you've got a fixed term, you know, 12 months, 24 months, 84 months, whatever, uh, then they can front load the interest using the rule of 78. That's what they do. <laughs> Holy schmagoli. All right. Anyway, uh, to your calls here at 1 800. Oh, by the way, thank you to all the many of you who wrote in to point out that I was right and Dean was wrong. And I, I was pretty certain I was right. But, you know, you're doing a live show and somebody shouts into your earphones, hey, it's Rule of 72s. Okay, Rule of 72s. I figure they have more time to read than I do. Turns out, even if they have more time to read than I do, dude, they don't necessarily read it. Having time to read something doesn't mean you actually read it. All right. Uh, let us say hello here to John on the Tom Likas show. Yeah, I was want to know, is there any way around this uh, crazy interest rates and how it's all set up? Well, that's how it's done. That's how banks and that's how finance companies make money. So it's every single one of them that way? It's none of them take that extra, you know, whatever it is and divide it out over 12 months or 14 months or whatever, they're all front-loaded like that? I don't know about all. I mean, I have heard of the term simple interest. I mean, there is probably somebody making loans like that, but I think that's usually individuals, like if somebody carries the mortgage on your house or something like that. Okay, so you have to look at 
uh, for simple interest loans, then is what you need to actually if, look if, for. If you can find them. I don't even know. Hang on. We have somebody who's in that business. Uh, Steve, you hear what John's question is. What's the answer? Well, let me clarify. Rule 78 years ago, and you're exactly right, is 1 plus 2 plus 3, 1 through 12 equals 78. And that was good for contracts. That I am a director of finance for a group of car dealerships. That was correct on contracts up to 60 months. Now, most contracts have exceeded 60 months. They're 66, 72, 75, 84. They have always been simple interest. That being said, 99.9% of every contract done in California through a car dealership is done on a simple interest contract. Nobody uses Rule of 78s anymore. Really? So you don't front load the interest? No. And it was never up to us anyways. That was always what the bank decided. Right. But there is no more front-loaded interest on car loans. It is the exact opposite of a home loan. All contracts now at car dealerships are simple interest loans. No is, matter is what. Is that the, the law, is, or is that the choice of the banks and finance companies? It's the choice of the banks and finance company. We could still offer a Rule of 78 loan. Uh, I don't even think there's a form available in this county to print that out on. It's an antiquated product. It's not there anymore. And it really was a bad product because all the interest was paid up front, and it made it very difficult to pay down your loan. And they do it on student loans, I believe, too, don't they? Don't know. Yeah. Don't know. Uh, possibly. But car loans now are all simple interest loans. Fascinating. They're, they're actually very good loans. The worst loan, of course, is your home loan. A car loan is the identical opposite. It's Fascinating. The and and the reason I am behind the times on this is because I've paid cash for my last four cars. Well, that's probably the most expensive way to acquire a car. Uh, there is no good way to acquire a car financially. You buy high, you sell low. So you're going to lose no matter what you do financially. Paying cash, the reason that it's so expensive, you could take that same money and invest it in a mutual fund or a bank, earn 4 5 6%, and you will actually earn more interest then you will pay back. Albert Einstein said the best invention of the 20th century was compounding interest. So leaving your money in the bank and earning interest is better for you than taking it, paying it on a car loan, even at a higher rate. Now, I always believed that was true when I could deduct the interest from my income taxes, which you could do until if about 15 deduct, years ago. Sure. If you can deduct, that's a windfall. Even if you can't but deduct. But you can't. Well, I do. I mean, there's lots of opportunities to deduct your car payment. I personally believe short-term leases is a great way to go. In and out of the car in a couple of years. Uh, two, three-year lease. I do, that with, I do that with women. <laughs> short-term I, I leases. I am the opposite. I, like, I always like driving a new vehicle. 33 years with the same woman. Put a, put but, a few miles on it and yeah. ride over a few speed bumps. Well, a little excess mileage, turn it back into the dealer. But I do think leasing is a great way to go. Every couple of years, you get a brand new car. Um, you put nothing down at the end, hand it back, get a new car, even before they need new tires. But if you're going to finance, obviously financing, the shorter the term, the better, if you can afford the payment. But you had said it something earlier about if you have to finance 72 months, you can't afford it. Probably not true anymore because balances on loans on cars have gone up faster than the income has. So when I started in this car business, a long-term loan was four years. Six years is normal now because the average unpaid balance is $28,000. It used to be $8,000 years ago. But if the average person doesn't even own a car for more than five years and they get a seven-year loan, that means everybody ends up upside down when they trade that car in? You are upside down all the time, even if you paid cash. For instance, you drive Lexus from what I gathered. I do. So if you pay $80,000 for a Lexus and sold it for forty. Tom, you lost forty thousand dollars. But I'm not upside down because I don't have a loan for fifty outstanding, and Correct. therefore be down ten thousand dollars. Correct. Correct. But you're personally upside down because you bought high, you sold low. The only reason you're not upside down is you paid to not be upside down up front. Right, but, but I you also really are upside down because you paid. Well, because you're going to lose on any sure. car. Well, correct. But the thousands of dollars in interest I would have paid, I didn't pay. Well, true, but. The thousands of dollars in interest you would have made on that eighty grand you didn't get, and and let's take a look at interest rates, uh, simple interest rates on a money market fund versus the interest rate on a car. Okay, let's do that. If you took your eighty thousand in the bank at four percent, you're going to earn four thousand dollars on eight on eight no, eighty thousand thirty two hundred. So if you think if you have uh, eight thousand eighty thousand in the bank at four percent, correct thirty two hundred. 
Next year, I'm doing it only annually, next year you've got $83,200 earning 4% and so on. It's compounding. Even if you borrowed the money at 7%, you're going to pay back less in interest over the course of the loan than you're going to earn in interest with the money in the bank. All right, this is my personal homework assignment tonight, and I rarely take homework home. I'm going to sit down and calculate that out. I, and I guarantee you I'll be right. The and I want to see. up to four points. And I will, I will, I will, <laughs> I will report my findings tomorrow. Right, I appreciate it. Okay. Keep up the good work. Steve, thank you for the call. Like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I actually got called out on being a listener of yours the other night. Love it. She's out of bars, and this girl comes up to me and starts talking to her. She goes, once you want to buy me a drink? She goes, sweetie, I never buy a girl a drink until I bang her. She goes, you're a Tom Likas with an aren't you? Yes, sir. It's the Tom Likas Show. Sound like his show. At 1 800 Tom, that's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Well, we saw all the sob stories in the newspaper about people who can't afford to pay for their houses. I didn't understand what I was getting myself into. It was a predatory. What does that mean? I don't even. A predatory lender. I don't get it. Now I'm losing the house I couldn't afford in the first place. Tired of these stories. Feel sorry for these losers. Forget it. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello to Robert on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. hey, good thing you're bringing this up here because there's something I noticed in my area of L.A., which is predominantly Hispanic. I, I see way more escalades in this area than I do in the rich areas of South Orange County. And most of these people here, uh, my neighbors that I have, uh, they're going to be losing their house soon. But any equity they got in their home, they had the nerve to spend it, 50000 Instead of adding a room or doing something at home, they bought an escalade. And I cannot believe when they sit there have the nerve to say, I paid cash for it. They go, what do you mean? You took it out of your house. Right, they did, they did like they, they took it from their home equity loan, or they took a second mortgage, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it makes no sense. I mean, how, how they can just go and spend money like that, and at the end, like I, said, I, I just don't get it. I have my 1996 vehicle, old car. I prefer to drive it. It's still got it's got almost 200,000 miles on it, but I'm okay with it. But meanwhile, they're the just losing their house now because they just they're just playing with their equity, thinking it's their it's their aunt their, or rich uncle. Uh, and that's just ridiculous that they do that. And I'm happy you brought this up because, man, these people got to learn that you cannot be spending uh, on these cars that there's no way in hell they can afford them. You're right about that. Robert, right. thank you. I appreciate the call there. one eight hundred five eight hundred. 800 tom is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Dave on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Doing great. Good. Hey, I have long-time listener, first-time caller. Thank I, you. Um, I heard this topic. It's perfect. I used to work for uh, one of the big three American car companies as a bill collector. And? Um, I've seen Dodge Neons with a 72-month loan at 21.1% interest rate sell for $80,000. <laughs> and these people, they have no idea what they're signing. They have not a clue. Um, I repoed cars all the time. I mean, not me personally, but I'd go tell a repo agent to go get them. And the kind of sob stories that you hear, you'd be, you'd never believe it. Boo hoo hoo! It's it's ridiculous. These people, they're they're dumb. Um, I've had people call me every name in the book. They don't answer their phone. Eh, well, then you got to call their mom. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, thank you for that. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Eric on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Mr. Likas. Thank you for taking my call. Love your show. Thanks. I am actually in the automotive industry and do financing for the automotive industry, and this uh, subject kind of hit home a little. We work hard to try and uh, earn people's business, and how competitive this industry is. We type up contracts. There are laws now saying we have to disclose everything on the contract and separate forms saying we have to, and they sign everything. And the customers are happy as a pound leaving, then four or five days later realize how much interest they're paying and get upset 
because they purchased a used Mercedes Benz with 50,000 miles and know they're going to be paying close to double for it with the interest. Yeah. And then it's our fault, us, the dealers, for selling them that car they came in and they wanted. Uh, it, how it, hard is it for somebody to take that wad of paper that you send in our direction with a pen and say, I'll come back tomorrow after I'm busy with my attorney or my accountant or whoever, let them look at this and explain it to me, and that will come back and I'll let you know what the final outcome is. Well, the, 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 the nice thing about our loans is because they're simple interest, we have option contract loans, which means that they can use our financing, and if they find an interest rate better somewhere else, guess what? They can use it, and it's all within legal, and they still get to drive the car that day. I mean, it, it, it's so wonderful for that to happen for these consumers. The laws are on their side, but yet they still get angry at us, the dealerships, and there are dealerships closing down all over the place because it's so competitive and it's so hard to turn a profit nowadays with these cars and how competitive it is and how flooded the market is with a lot of these vehicles. I mean, Ford alone is closing 12 dealerships in the Southern California within the next six months. And Chrysler is going to be shutting dealerships all across the country, I read. Oh, yeah, well, the new buyout with uh, with uh, the people that own GMAC, they're... Um, you know, it's it's just so hard to turn a profit in this industry. I mean, it's good money. It's it's time consuming, but it really hits home because I'm trying to install a professional environment in my the finance department, and then I'm seen that as a crook because I had customers sign eight spots on a five five three simple interest contract. Then they get mad at me because they don't pay their bills. <laughs> yeah, well, I, you know, I I feel your pain. You know, we do business with a lot of car dealerships that have advertised on our show over the years. I spent time in showrooms. I've spent time with with the uh, salespeople and sales managers and fleet managers. Um, I know how many regulations you guys have and how many laws you have to comply with. And I know that uh, whereas 40 years ago there may have been an interesting stereotype about used car dealers, you guys are one of the most regulated industries in America today. And it is, and, and, and we have to comply by that, otherwise DMV comes in and shuts us down. We have to comply with DMV laws, state laws, and local city laws, and the financial institution laws, all within our guidelines yeah. and parameters. You guys have lemon laws and uh, laws about disclosures, and uh, the wad of paper people have to look at and sign in order to buy a car is huge, and a lot of that is information about what you're signing. And the, and the law is we have to disclose everything. It's a disclosure law that happened in, in 2006 indicating any type of additional options and features they want, we have to disclose it on a separate form they have to sign. In detail, price, and how it affects their monthly investment. And it really bothers me that I'm trying to institute a professional environment in a, car deal, uh, in a dealership, and it gets challenging because every time that customers start going over their monthly budgets and realize, oh, my gosh, maybe I paid uh, $100 too much or so and uh, than, than what they can afford, not the type of car, but what they can afford, they get they, they get mad at us for selling. Well, that's the other thing I don't understand. I if, if you're getting yourself into a six, seven year car loan, you're looking at an eight year car loan. Maybe you need to dial it down a bit. Six year car loan is the norm now, sir. Seventy two yeah. months. Well, maybe you need a year old car or a two year old car. And then they're going to want a more expensive car on top of that with the two year old. Oh, if I buy a fifty thousand dollar Mercedes and buy a two years old, oh, I can get it for like thirty, forty grand. Oh, I know, day. I know you're right. I know you're right about that. I, I mean, what I'm saying is maybe you need to be driving a Honda Accord or a Toyota Corolla until you can afford a big boy car like that. And then, and here, here's the here's the flip side with us. We t we look at their well, we look at their budget and how much monthly income they make, and we get a bank approval and we sell them a car, and we're looking at each other in, in the eye saying, how are they going to afford this? And we and, and and we become some sort of you know self conscious and kind of say, hey, and and give them the other side. What what's going to stop them from going to the dealership right next door and them doing it? So how are we? To, you know, I know I believe me, Eric. I completely understand where you're coming from, and I'm on your side in this. I uh, I am tired of the sob stories about people who buy things without bothering to uh, figure out uh, what they're paying, or how much they're paying per month, or what the total amount of interest is, or what the terms of the deal are, and then they cry about it to the newspapers. I'm I'm tired of it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's 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 challenging for us, but we're going to keep fighting the good fight. Thanks a lot for your support, Tom, and take me out, Kobe style, buddy. There you go, Eric. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Oh. I have less than 30 seconds for Hector. Go ahead, Hector. Now I have less than 20 seconds for Hector. What's up, Tom? Now I've got less than 15 seconds for Hector. Hello, Tom. Now I've got 10 seconds for Hector. Hello, Tom. Now I've got five seconds for Hector. Good comments. Words to think about.
The Tom Likas Show.